This is going to be a series on the CPU. There are going to be about three lessons dealing from a general introduction and understanding to a more in-depth look and closing with the history of the CPU. For the general introduction and understanding, we will look at what is the CPU, where is it usually found, and how does it interface with the surrounding circuitry. The central processing unit is a common component in many of the devices that we use today. From our laptops to our phones and even the cars that we drive, the CPU can be found. It is as essential to our digital infrastructure as steel is to our physical infrastructure. Even though as important as a CPU is, it did not always play a role in the first computers. In the beginning, computers were wired to do a certain task and could not change to a new task without extensive rewiring. These are called fixed program computers. The CPU was born from the idea of creating computers that could switch from one task to the next seamlessly. These are called stored program computers. In a stored program computer, Lines of codes are stored in memory, which are then sent to the CPU for processing. After processing, the result is returned. This new technology opened the doors for programmers to be able to write different tasks that can be performed on the same hardware. It is safe to say that this was probably the beginning of the era of coding. At the center of most digital devices, sits the microprocessor. This can be deemed as a physical brain for the device where logic is processed. The microprocessor is basically an integrated circuit containing transistors. The larger number of transistors, the more powerful the processor. Most current microprocessors contains multiple CPUs called cores. These are called multi-core processors. Today the term CPU and microprocessor are synonymous. So whether you prefer to say CPU or microprocessor, it is safe to say that they pretty much do the same thing. Let us go through a brief explanation on how the CPU works alongside the rest of the circuitry. The CPU is connected to the outside through the external data bus and the address bus. Connecting to the CPU through the external data bus and the address bus is the memory controller chip, also known as the MCC. A signal called the clock cycle informs the CPU that there is work that is needed to be done. The CPU contacts the MCC via the address bus requesting a line of code from memory. The MCC which is connected to the computer's memory, retrieves the code and sends it to the CPU by the external data bus. The CPU now has the needed info and goes to work. Through the use of its internal registers, the CPU works out the result and sends it along the external data bus to its destination. Just as there are a combination of steps taken outside of the CPU, so are they within. The inner workings of the CPU will be covered more in depth in a later lesson, but for now, just try to see the CPU for what it is. It is the central processing unit, aka the brain, for all of our digital needs. So this was an introduction into the CPU, also known as a microprocessor. It can be found in most of our everyday devices. It is an integrated circuit that is made up of transistors and connects to the outside world through the external data bus and the address bus. Connected to the CPU is the MCC, which can be considered as the middleman for the CPU and the computer's memory. So that's all for now on the introduction into the CPU. For more lessons like this, subscribe to the channel and head over to heymikey.com. And as always, thank you for watching.